to the Big Bank Theory podcast, episode number one. Uh, we're here, my name's John, and my friend and colleague Dan is here too. Hello. We're here to talk about all things Exeter City. We were planning to start this podcast at the beginning of the season. Uh, instead, we're going to start it at the end of Paul Tisdale's season. Hmm. Dan, it was, uh, it was a spicy old game on Saturday. Yeah, it was brilliant. It was really good, wasn't it? Best game of the season? Uh, yeah, gotta be. Exciting, eh? Although I can't remember any others. <laughs> My memory for like remembering football games is terrible. So we're going to say it. Who we're, we're playing. <laughs> you know. But it was great. We're calling it best game of the season in your memory. Yeah. Good. So it was all there. Everything was happening. We had goals. We had aggro. We had a banner from the, B, from the uh, Red Legion that I couldn't see. It was wild times. Yeah, the banner said... Um, was it our club, our passion? Ah, uh, did it? Yeah. I like that. So it's not like it was a big dig at MK Dons, it was just a nice display. So let's talk about MK Dons. Yeah. What even is that? Who knows? McDonald's, Who knows? McDonald's FC. Terrible, terrible football team. A terrible place. <laughs> they a stole their football club. A terrible idea, yeah. Um, I don't know really, what is it? Well, it's... A curious anomaly of a team that just kind of came out of nowhere, was stolen from the good people of Wimbledon, was moved up the road, they nearly went to Dublin, and... Yeah, moved a long way up the road as well. It's not like it's, you know, you're moving over from Luton. It's like, it's a long way away. You can't expect those fans to be like, yeah, yeah, fine, we're just, uh, you know... Well, surely none of those fans are from Wimbledon or from surrounding areas. Maybe you already lived in Milton Keynes and you thought, oh, this has worked out well for me. Well, I yeah, of course, yeah. Wimbledon. I wonder how many there are, actually, like, actual, genuine, like, they, I did support Wimbledon and now I support MK Dance. I don't reckon it's many. No, surely not. So they're a made-up club and our very favourite manager from the past number of years, Paul Tisdale, he was always going to leave and, you know, we didn't like it. And he went about it in all the wrong way, I think. No. We were big fans of um, Tiz, weren't we? Yeah. And, uh, and I didn't want to go. <clears throat> and neither did you, I don't think. Did no, you? I didn't. I didn't want him to go. And as it was all going on, we were at that Stevenage game. I think yeah. where it all kicked off. Stevenage last season, away. And um, Tisdale, I don't know, I didn't see it. Three of us were there, weren't we? We travelled up together. But... The people say that he made some kind of sign at some of our supporters. And yeah. So on Saturday, of course, everyone was responding with, let's all do the Tisdale, which amused me somewhat. But yeah. if he did that, that was weird. And a weird fall from grace from a man who just is essentially the equivalent of kind of um, some sort of almost loafer of the Art Deco period who kind of professes not to care about anything then turns into kind of the angriest football manager there's ever been and does hand gestures at his own supporters. So that was a weird... Yeah, thing. and at the time I think I was probably, I kind of, I would have been, I was quite defensive probably because I was like, well, I didn't see it. I was at the game. Yeah. I can't imagine him doing it. It was, it, was, it seemed, it did seem out of character, like, for him to have done that. You know, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, that's not his style. He was a, he, he usually did, he was quite... um. Yeah, it just didn't. Well, really he was kind fit of aloof from the thing, wasn't it? No, it didn't fit. And yeah. he, he he's someone who presented himself as someone that I don't even really like football. Yeah, I'm just good at doing this. I'm different and to those other managers, and we heard the subtext yeah. of Big Sam or uh, Pardew or someone like that. Yeah, and we thought, I'm, yeah. I'm dressing differently. <laughs> yes, I'm speaking differently, and yeah, that didn't fit really. Even though you got to give credit to Big Sam and Alan Pardew. None of them are doing the wanker sign at their own fans, are they? No, they're not. They're not. Well, so, Alan Pardew has done some stuff. Well, you know? let's never forget what he said to Pellegrini. You can yeah, look at I'm not head, saying that on the radio. Head, but is, uh, who was it? A Crystal Palace player. <laughs> Goodness knows. Yeah, he did. So that's Tisdale. And then so maybe he did that sign because his behaviour from Stevenage away through to Wembley was bizarre. And I felt, and I'd supported him a lot with our friends, with the people that we know. I'd supported him a lot and said, no, he's different, he's good, he cares. And maybe he did care, but then his 
behaviour at Wembley when we'd already lost the game and he maybe didn't know he was going but he certainly told us there was a chance he was going. He didn't even wave at us. No, nothing. Very strange. Straight down the tunnel after a... And, you know, that's the second time in a row and well, you think, you know, you're lucky. Some football teams would think you're lucky to be in that position where you've been twice in a row to... You got you made it that far. You came close. It means you're up there and like you're in the running. You know, I mean, I ask a Cheltenham fan if they what would they rather have or something. And yeah, I'm sure they'd much rather be there than not. But it was terrible. That sec that uh, the Coventry final was game was. I mean, from our point of view, we were abject. Weren't we? There, was, there yeah. was nothing to get excited about. No. And at the end, you kind of feel like. Oh, it's the least you could do, isn't it? The, the good people clatter. of Wanford. Just a little clown. The fine folks of Hevertree. Yeah. Um, all our friends in St Thomas. They deserved Tisdale to wave and say thanks very much. And it would have made that day memorable in a way that it became completely forgettable. From this could be huge for us to nothing of significance happened. No one waved to say goodbye. The f- football was awful. Well, in fact, it became the only thing of of significance was the fact that because Dale just did one at the yeah. final whistle. That's right. And that's the last time we saw him. Like, so that's how he went. Later. Uh, so he went. And then another year, a man up in the village had a car. God, boy. I've never had no such things out. And he said to me one day, would you like to go to Exeter to do some shopping? Call, I said to father, that would be a treat. I said, not been up Exeter for years. <laughs> Straight away, Taylor came in and obviously set himself up as a bit different to Tisdale. He got his weird ice box that he sits on. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> well, I, I look forward to the day he passes out chalk ices. When we go up in third place, yeah. and he c- opens it up and chalk ices ahoy for if everyone. If he starts making it a thing, like, <laughs> like that's his thing, I sit on this ice cream box. <laughs> People call me the ice cream man. And I'd give them out to the kids, you know, at the, at the final whistle. Then great, I'd love that. He'd certainly that be a cool be character then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but we haven't seen that yet. But anyway, he sets himself up as different to Tisdale. The people on the big bank sing to him, give us a wave, and he waves. And so we're pleased. It's worked out well. And obviously it was a thriving start to the season. Great. He just seemed to want the players to look like they were enjoying it again. And so we've had a really nice... And I use that word in the best possible way. We've had a really nice six months of, even when it's a bit stressy and some of our players have left and we think who's going to fill this in or Boateng's injured or whatever, even when it's a bit stressy, we're having quite a nice time. We've never been in danger of relegation. Yeah, this, I mean, the start of the season is what, like, it's, it's almost like the best you could have hoped for. Because no one was thinking, yeah, and we'll get this guy from the under twenty threes, and he'll take us straight into the automatic promotion places. No one's thinking that. They're just we're thinking maybe mid table be good first season, get going, and then we'll build for next season. So it's 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 been better than that, you know. Obviously, and we've been in and like around that kind of. We barely dropped out of the uh, player places, have we? No, we have not. So that's the kind of situation we find ourselves in, and. I think we're not alone in thinking just not relegation would be lovely and actually we've had much more than that. We get to a place where uh, it's dropped off a bit since Christmas. We can pretty obviously say that Stockley was a part of that going. Uh, Boateng course, yeah. and injured. I missed Boateng massively. You look at those like, early, like the good run that's first half of the season. Almost every goal seemed to be a combination of Boateng, Nicky Law, James Stockley. That's where all our goals seem to come from. And we had there was other people kind of weighing in. Four or got one, and he like yep. or a couple, and then uh, Tristan Abrahams and like goals from a few other places. But that, yeah, re- recently before the January transfer window had sort of boiled down to it's mainly Stockley scoring, which is what makes his like leaving was so worrying, wasn't it? It was. And I think we were all... I think we all knew we'd happened upon a gem with him. And it, I don't know about you, when people were saying those statistics about top five leagues in Europe and Stockley, I was thinking, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Still, sometimes you watch him, he doesn't seem to be able to time his jumping for a header. But yeah. nevertheless, he'd done... Something magical had happened, and it was working. 
we have a bit of a bit of a grey time post Christmas. Newport away, you were at. Yeah, that was horrific. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, partly because of the weather, partly because we couldn't get anything going. But I mean, I mean, this ties into the MK Dons game in a way. I think you look at how Newport played against play at home and how they played against us when we were there and and what there. What the pitch is like there. I mean, it is literally a rugby ground. They yeah. play rugby there yeah. one week, then they play football there. So, you know, it's um, and we couldn't get anything going there. You know, and and I was just just after Stockley's gone, so we're, you know, we're, you know, it's it's, it's that transition period. Where we haven't quite decided what we're going to do yet, and no one's really done this before, and um, yeah, it didn't go particularly well. No, um, I, I got a question for you about Newport's ground, Rodney Parade. How often does Rodney parade? Right He's now? there every day. Every day. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Um, I saw him yeah. doing his little parade. It's a shame, really, because he just has to do it on his own, but they've called it that now, so <laughs> they could get other people in who are also called Rodney's job. I don't think it's funny. It's not a very common name nowadays, is it? Hard to come by, Rodney. Hard to find a rod. Yes. Um, well, anyway, poor old Rodney. We'll, uh, we'll stay in touch with him and see how he's getting on. But... Things were, I guess, ambiguous approaching this MK Dons game. Uh, and Tisdale's weird hats, I kind of missed them. Matt Taylor starts wearing some sort of Wenger-style coat. Didn't like that. I no. thought, what's going on? You know, maybe maybe this isn't as positive as I thought it was. Uh, and then we picked up a few points and we, we liked it. We kind of scraped through and we thought, really, honestly, are we going to get through this MK Dons game unscathed and then David Wheeler David Wheeler signs for MK I'm pulling a face listeners because that felt another like another favourite another old favourite absolutely and it felt like uh, an ominous sign it really did <laughs> and you and I talked and we thought well that just sums it all up Ryan Harley will score a beautifully floated 25 yard goal and Wheeler will pull our defence apart and Jordan Moore Taylor will score from a corner and you know it'll if we get out of this not embarrassed, that would have been okay. Yeah, although at the same time, MK are on a, are on a terrible run. Yeah. Especially away from home. I, I really didn't know what to expect from it. I thought, because in those types of games, you know it's going to feel weird for, for Tiz. He's coming back, he was here for 12 years, he's, he's going to feel weird. That is, will have an effect on the players. It has got that kind of like... Although now I'm sure the MPs on fans will <laughs> strenuously deny <laughs> any of this. But it did have a derby feel and there's no way that was just one sided. They would have been feeling some of that too. Absolutely. Because and they were... their manager's so invested in it. Yeah, that's and absolutely so, right. I, so with those types of games, you know, like they can they can go either way. As we know any League Two game really can go either way at any point. Yes. It's and um, It can go yeah, any other way. I had way. this kind of sense of like I was I mean really I was really up for it and uh, but I was like you know, you had a bit of a feeling in your stomach, a bit of a sense of dread around it as well, you know. And, and um, but Well, yeah. we sold lots of tickets, and, you know, shout out to Julian Tagg's uh, strenuous marketing efforts. If you read his Echo article, he would have pointed out that, yes, Paul Tisdale will be coming back to see a new stand and a new away end, and that would be significant, but also he'd be coming back to see those digital <laughs> advertising boards. And I really think that's where the game was won. <laughs> I think... He saw those advertising boards, the, um, what are they, LED? I don't know what they are. Yeah, those the Electronics. Yeah. Advertising hoarding. And he saw that and he just couldn't cope. And everything, all his plans for the match, everything just completely evaporated and he just couldn't get the message to the players. And that essentially is why they lost the game. <laughs> well, he blamed the winter sun, but I think I was more blinded by the digital advertising hoarding. Yeah, let's talk about that interview. So, so well, they turn up at the game, don't they? And there's rumours, and I can't confirm this, that Tisdale had some sort of muscle man bodyguard yeah. with him. That's, that's the rumour. protection. Yeah, hired <laughs> yeah, protection. Um, in fairness to the good people of Exeter, we packed that ground out. That was a big old attendance for what's essentially a very cold, normal game on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah. So, um, 5,500 extra fans, 250 from MK... Pathetic, by the way. You get 8,000 at home. 250 travelling, pathetic. That is weird, isn't it? Well, it just fits in with the fact that surely they're just a tourist attraction in Milton Keynes. So people who live there think, yeah, maybe I'll go. 
but no one actually cares. But those 250k, that's unfair on them, they've travelled. But Well, clearly not many people care that much. It's not like it's, you know... It's not the long, the furthest away away game of the ah, season. It's is pretty it? close, it's like, isn't it? Really, it's, it's like, not Carlisle. It's not Carlisle. So they come, the game happens, and we, and I'm not using this word too strongly, trance them. Trance is a good word. Fully yeah. trance. Yeah. Um, the Tisdale trance, they're calling it. We embarrassed them. We did embarrass them straight away, out of the blocks, flying start, and lots of our players who I've been unsure about this year, Sweeney, Jake Taylor. Fought, all good players, I think, but haven't really performed. They were flying. When I saw Woodman back in the starting eleven after Kane Wilson. Kane Wilson's performance on the left the week before, I was I was just like, oh, there we go then. That you know, I was just like, it almost like I thought that meant we're shutting up shop. Yeah, he's, he doesn't want to risk someone who, an attacking player so he's putting Woodman in there and I don't know who was wearing that Woodman shirt but I didn't recognise it because <laughs> what a performance he was brilliant but they all were yeah I mean it's hard to fight anyone and like yeah and again Fort Fort was flying around like we've not seen at all this season like I owe Jonathan Fort an apology actually because I've been sort of you've got to stop egging his house mate I've told you before I mean it's not quite that bad but I had Accused him of not being a professional footballer. Wow. But that, you heard it here first, but listeners. I can now see I was wrong. He is. Uh, he, he was really good. They were all, they were all great. And also, look at the whole season. Harley's missed the whole most of the season for injury, which is basically what's happened for the last few years of his career. Yeah. You know, there's not much he can do about that. That's not his fault. But surely, Nicky Law to MK Dons, that would have been a possibility. They got more money than us, you know? Like, I'd imagine anyone that was coming to Exeter could have gone to Milton Keynes. Of course. Um, and that's probably true of almost anyone that went anywhere in... League two, except probably Lincoln, so they're pulling from the biggest pool, and that's got to go down as a mistake by Tisdale or his team. Yeah, I mean, what a signing that is. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Sometimes you get the players where, like, I, I'm stopped is almost an example of this, where it's it's not like he was scoring all these goals and up there with Lionel Messi or whatever before we signed him. He wasn't doing no, that no, well. he had a dreadful old time, wasn't he? he? So. So maybe that's the case, and you know these things just happen, and it uh, it works out for a player. Like maybe that's happened with Law, but the, when you look at him play every week, you must think like, how did no one else want this guy? Yeah, yeah. So I guess I want to change what I said, and actually, it's not a Tisdale mistake. That's a Matt Taylor stroke of genius. Yeah. Um, Matt Taylor and his team. So there it was, and it was a brilliant, brilliant game. And then up steps old Tantrum Tisdale. Steps up to the mic. Steps up to the mic. Or in, um, or in these days, this day and age, it's really just like about five blokes jamming iPhones in his face. Yeah, I feel sorry for the... Shout out to the manufacturers of Dictaphones. Uh, yeah. Surely an industry that's yeah. not it, gone well in the last It's game years. over for Dictaphones. It is. Even though they really brought out those digital ones, we haven't got the tiny little tape anymore. That's gone. They're thinking, right, we've got to move to the times. Get the digital ones in. Yeah, it's too right. late. See you later. See you later. Same with calculators, really. Anyway, that's by the by. I'd imagine Tisdale still uses a calculator and a dictaphone. Abacus, I reckon, and pen and paper. <laughs> Pencil and paper. A quill. <laughs> and parchment. Um, yeah, well, you know that um, the rumour is that he's had built some sort of Greek amphitheatre at Milton Keynes, and him and Perryman sit around in togas and are drawing the, uh, drawing the sand where they think Harley should stand, which I believe is uh, <laughs> somewhere to the left of Nicky Law. Um, anyway, I feel sorry for all those people making those dictaphones. Tisdale steps up to the iPhone and, you know, maybe his dad cap had fallen over his eyes. Maybe his parka had, was just his hood was too big for him. 
maybe the ear flaps on his uh, patented ear flap hat had covered up not just his ears but his entire psyche because what he came out with in that interview was, and I use this word very carefully, demented. Yeah, claptrap. <laughs> Gubbins. What is he talking about? Utter tug. Like, there's an agenda there with those with the things he said because none of them make any sense in <laughs> no. the real world. <laughs> no, no it's saying about the Newport ground. You've been to other League Two grounds. It's not like. And also, you've been to St James's Park before. Well, you let's not Quite forget. A few times. Let's not forget that Tisdale, in one of his many fundraising bids, wanted the money to redo that pitch, and the trust and the fans forum and all this got the money together so that that pitch was, under his instruction, rebuilt. Yeah, that's him. That's on him. So he's now blaming it on himself. Well, I don't know. It's not like Again. Matt Taylor's been down there with his with his uh, Toyota Yaris and he's done a few mushrooms and the gold mouth, is it? it? It doesn't make any sense at all. Though. Yeah, I, I, it, it, if you watch it back, it sort of, in, he's sort of saying, when he's saying, oh, this is League Two football, you've got to be, what did you expect? You've got to be able to be more streetwise. It, it's almost like he's saying, the reason we lost is because we're too good. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? He's basically saying, we're, we're a bigger club than this. We've got to learn how to do it in this terrible way they do it down here. Yeah. But we're really, that's what, that's, and it was like, what are you talking about? For a start, again, this, it, it's, this does upset me a bit because I'm such a big fan of Tisdale and stuff. And I really think this, this is almost the point where I was just like, Ah, oh, forget it. What are you talking about? Is this his Liam Neeson moment, where it turns out he was a racist all the time? I mean, not a racist. <laughs> not a racist. He's not a racist. <laughs> but he is it, m- moronic. Yeah. That was dem- bizarre. And Winter Sun is not a reason. And let's not forget, we were facing the, and I'm doing the old speech mark hands here, we were facing the Winter Sun when we scored our first two goals in 20 minutes. Yeah. What's he complaining about? Well, got sh- the sun was out the whole time. <laughs> we, we were on the big bank. You cannot, you couldn't see the entire game. It's not like it was only like that for them. No. Like, so another point doesn't make any, that doesn't make any sense. The the conditions. I remember Paul Sisdale once said, "There's no such thing as bad weather. There's only bad gear." Yes. That was after that game that got called off at <laughs> half time last season. The Boxing Day last year. I would, I would, I would respond with this, Paul. Maybe there's no such thing as bad conditions, only bad players, and they play for MK Dons. Yes, indeed so. And most of those players, by the way, we're now in February, so this wasn't a shock to them what League Two grounds are like. They've not suddenly, it's not a Juventus job where they've been demoted from Serie A to Serie Z. Or it's not even the FA Cup. No, where, you know you got to go away to Haven at Waterlooville, and basically you lose to the pitch. Good reference. This is that is not the, the, what happened well, here. Well, when I used to play sat- Saturday afternoon football in the Devon and Exeter Football League, Intermediate Five or whatever, and you'd go and play at Cheriton Fitzpain third team. Shout out to the Cherries, um, and the groundsman had forgot to mow the lawn. That's one thing. Yeah. This was a nice pitch on a nice sunny day where five and a half thousand Exeter City fans could with the aid of these things called hands, see pretty much was what was going on. Your goalkeepers had caps if they wanted them, and none of those goals were goalkeeping errors, by the way. No, and also, Christy Pym didn't wear the cap. No. MK Don's keeper, um, I can't remember your name. <laughs> Nichols? Yeah. I want to say Nichols. Did wear the cap. So, and also, I mean, look at how, look. just watch the highlights. Look at our goals. Look at the first goal we scored. The ball's on the ground, you know. I mean, apart from the Jonathan Fort bicycle kick assist part of it, the ball's played on the ground. Lee Holmes picks it up, he plays the ball into feet. Nicky Law does some incredible sort of spin roulette back heel pass. It, it's not like we were hoofing it and no. like playing this long ball game, you know? No. So he's obviously bitter and he's obviously cross, and I, I get the crossness and I get that must be an embarrassing thing, but. Again, he just proved himself to be unaware of his audience. Just say, Exit City are obviously a really good team. They obviously really wanted it because we're all coming back here. Fair play, they beat us on the day. Say that. Your fans would understand that, I think. We would certainly understand that. And we'd say, well, yeah, maybe he's got some realism. And instead, it felt like an extension of the weirdness 
um, yeah. that we watched last season. And so it really framed for me how Matt Taylor's made a change. To see them up close next to each other. You know when you can't see a change over time. You can't see how much your wallpaper's faded until you find, you move your cupboard and you can see how actually it's completely different. That's yeah. what it felt like. Not just in terms of his attitude, but in terms of the football they were playing. Harley to Wheeler, Harley to some of the midfielders, try and tap it around. It weren't working. They didn't want it. They didn't understand what kind of was happening there, which was a lively game of football. Yeah. That's Tisdale's fault. And that's also Harley's fault. He would have known that these mates, what these mates could do, and he would have known that they would have wanted to win it. Absolutely. Weird. I think they underestimated us to an extent. Maybe not his dead, but the players. I mean, maybe that's what he was getting at. And that might have an element of truth in it. Maybe they did think. But then they've been on such a bad run. They've lost to, uh, you know, everyone they've played away recently, pretty, pretty much. And like, So it's difficult to find excuses. And he seemed to make a lot of them. And yeah, it, it, I was disappointed in him. Me too. To embrace my inner Keegan... I will love it when either we beat them at Wembley or they drop out of the playoffs clean, which may well happen, actually. Could do, couldn't it? Top nine, top 11's quite close, and they are not on a good run of form. And the supporters, I mean, they're not, they're, they're not turning out in numbers for him away. I'd imagine if that's the kind of theme up there, they'll not turn out for them at home either. Yeah, they probably won't even turn to Wembley, will they? <laughs> It's quite close to Milton Keynes. Maybe they would. It's Maybe. A... I mean, even... I mean, I don't want to go there again. I don't want to go to Wembley again. No. But well, if it comes down to it, we will. And we've got that... We have We have got the parking space. A friend of yours lives about five minutes walk from the stadium. So we... You know, every cloud. <laughs> so after both those two... Last two playoff final defeats, we've been able to console ourselves by saying... At least the car's only a five minute walk away. <laughs> well, that's something, isn't it? I mean, here's my next question, I suppose. Are we just on a countdown to a commiseration burrito at Reading Services, which we'll get to half an hour earlier than the uh, supporters' coaches, by the way? We may well be, yeah. But although there's no... Re- it, like you said, there's, there has been a change. We're not the same team anymore. It's not the exact same setup. So even if the exact same thing happens again, I don't think it'll feel the, it, it won't feel as won't be such the sort of groundhog day feeling that the last two years have because they did have that, didn't they? You know, at the end of both those games, it was almost like this is exactly the same feeling from watching basically the same match and the same thing happen. Yeah, yeah, it really was. But we're not, yeah, you're absolutely right. We're not in that situation anymore. Matt Taylor will come and clap us. He will wave. He will get support uh, the players up for it. And also, he'll. It, you'd like to think that he'll go for it in that game. And that's what we did. We didn't have the, the. You know, Tisdale for all his, you know, good points that he had as as a manager. I mean, it seemed like some both those occasions at least we we didn't we didn't go for it. It was too like. It was quite conservative. I mean, he's always very patient. Like you know, the, the football we played was patient, and like it was frustrating at times. But over the course of the season, you have to say, well, it does work. But on those big one-off games like that, and it's not like we weren't capable of getting up for a big game. The semi-final against Lincoln, yeah, the second leg. Yeah. We, obviously, you know, we were like that was probably one of the best moments of last season. So I went into that game thinking, oh, I'm going to feel bereft of this person who was kind of unique. And I'm going to feel uh, jealous of MK in only one way, that they're going somewhere. And actually, I came out of it thinking, no, we're in a really good place. Yeah. It's I mean, like... It's all down to the... I mean, that is all down to what happens on the pitch, isn't it, really? I mean, I think I agree. I probably would have had some of those saying... I would have felt the same way had we lost the game, you know? I guess we, that's true. If we'd lost it, yeah, you might you would be thinking some of those things, but we didn't. We didn't, and but I can't. In a word, in a way, this is stupid conversation for a podcast because I can't really put it into words. But there's just something feels like progress, and I guess the truth is, for the last three, four, five years under Tisdale, there was very little progress. He talked the same. They played the same. The games and seasons panned out the same. Yeah, you'd see players. You'd see. The youth set up progressing, yeah, but you wouldn't see the, the senior side moving anywhere. And we all see, and you know, and behind the scenes, the club obviously has made, has been making big progress. And you know, some of that is down to like 
Cause cause there's there's there. And yeah. like <coughs> a lot of it happened while he was there, even if it wasn't anything he was directly involved in. So all that has been pushing towards the fact that we, you know, sh- uh, are trying to take the club forward and maybe you know, into League One is like the last kind of bit we need to get past so we can have all this stuff that is ready for that level of football. Yeah. And so when that happens, you know, the sooner the better, but we'll be ready then. And then, we, especially with the youth setup, you'd see all these young players coming through. You mean, look at, look at the ones who've gone on to, look at the su- success some of our youth players have had just in the last couple of seasons. It's like, it's um, it's incredible. Yeah. Ethan Ampadu. Yeah, Watkins. Watkins. Story. I think... Um, Grimes, you know, like... I, I mean, yeah. What was difficult to take with all those players was the team and the club, while we knew we needed the money at some point, and we knew, obviously, for those players' ambitions, we wouldn't be able to hold on to them forever, they always seemed to go a little bit early. Yeah. And um, it felt like we're always going to be, the footballing side is always going to be run at the detriment uh, of the other stuff, which is really frustrating. And I don't know if Tisdale ever really grasped that, uh, and as brilliant as it is what happens behind the scenes, and hats off to all those people that run that, they, I think there was maybe a bit of an imbalance between Tisdale's team and them. So when he said, no, no, it's important that we are making progress in ways that no one else can see, and by that I mean the people that come to the games, it then felt really difficult for us to stomach that when, actually, if we had this player for another six months we'd be pushing... So if if, if Watkins had still been with us at this year's playoff, last year's playoff final, I think it would have been a different story. Yeah. Um, And and you can add 20 other players into that narrative. So what would be brilliant to see now, and this is why I think it feels like progress, is Matt Taylor, even though we always knew we were going to lose Stockley at some point, he's made it look really clear that he had a plan for when that happened, which was a huge number of new players. And in the same way that Tisdale never made substitutes at the right time, I felt, he also never made transfers at the right time. And it was always a bit like, well, we'll just manage with what we've got, or we'll bring in this person last minute. Or they will look good, but they'll just sit on the bench, so why have I even brought them in? Whereas Taylor seems to understand the narrative of, here comes someone, this is why it's good for the supporters, this is what it's going to look like in practice, in football in terms, so that we can just move forward a bit. And we're, I think we're all realistic, and... It's very unlikely that Exeter City will be the next Bournemouth, but League One is at least where we deserve to be. Absolutely. Right. What did he say? He said, as you say, he only chopped him down because he couldn't see the view no more. What's he moaning about? What did he say? He said, an edge is an edge. He only chopped it down because it's for his view. What's Reaper moaning about? So he's brought in Randall Williams yeah. and Ryan Bowman. Yeah. This lad from Wolves. Yeah. Uh, Donovan Wilson. Yeah, Wilson coming in and O'Shea Obviously staying. Came, came um, so that's been, that's been good and positive. Um, and it just feels like, yeah, okay, we know we need stuff. We're going to do it. We're going to make it happen. We've made it happen. We've had a really good transfer window, I think. Um, and... Shout out to Matt Taylor for realising that actually often supporters are won over by internet rumours and uh, something to get excited about it between Saturday to Saturday. Yeah, and you want that as well. And, and if, if you believe that the, the supporters can have an impact on the game, then things like that are important. It frustrated people before when we buy, when we have players who just, you think, why haven't I seen this guy? He's been sat on the bench. Yeah. Whole, you know, and then... Ryan Loft being absolute top of that list. Ryan Loft, yeah, who spent, from what I could tell, most of the time um, lying on his back in fitness first, <laughs> not really doing anything, um, and then ends up at Leicester, ends up signing permanently for Leicester. It's and a mystery. You must think, I mean, I don't know how he's getting on there. I think he scored a couple in under 21s, but you must think, like, someone's seen something in him that th- they think he's worth. Why? What did he play? Like, I think he started the last game of last season, didn't he? Yeah. I mean, it was he, came off, he came off at half time. So I thought he looked all right. It's very strange. And so that kind of decision from the old era has been thankfully banished, I would say. Well, I hope so. We see progress yeah. often. I mean, it was a strange old thing to do. So it'd be weird if any new manager came in and carried that on. Yeah. And I think Tisdale's 
enigmaticness. At times, you thought like, oh, this this pays off. But in the last few years, it never really paid off. So to see someone, no offence to Matt Taylor, who's a bit less of an enigma, um, although what is in that, that ice cream box he sits on. Um, yeah. Apart from that, I think, actually, yeah, we just need something that's a bit more solid and real. And I think that's been a really welcome change. Yeah. <laughs> Listeners, if you see any uh, Exeter City players, past or present, in curious places, you can get in touch with us via the internet. There's this new thing called the internet, and uh, we are on it uh, via Twitter at bigbankpod, bigbankpod at gmail.com. We'd love to hear where you see Randall Williams, what kind of Krispy Kreme he eats. Um, one of, yeah, us, one of our favourite pastimes, really, mine especially, is just seeing... City players around town. I've nearly <laughs> knocked three over on my bike, the most recent of which being Lee Holmes outside Mega Kebab. Nice. His Would... fault, not mine. I, I was wearing Exeter City gloves at the time, which uh... I used to sort of <laughs> gesture him to stop and not cross the road. <laughs> you must have heard what was going on. Um, Dan... That one was good. I, I just one, one other one on that was at the end of last season, post playoff final it seemed to be the leavers do because it was I was uh, on my way home from work again same spot Sybil Street outside those kebab shops Ryan Harley Liam McAlinden Robbie Simpson (laughs) and it was like I was like oh maybe this is the leavers do they were just getting on the National Express to Milton Keynes Um, not McAlinden no not McAlinden no he got off on the way he thought he was going (laughs) he arrived Tiz was like oh Liam no um no. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Well, if you'd like to tell us where you've seen these players, what they were doing, what they were eating or drinking, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, I once uh, skinned Sufjan Gazgazi in a Sunday league game, so any tales like that, we'd love to hear them. We must learn to live and love each other before it's too late. We have to stop! Well, Dan, it's been uh, good to talk to you about the highs and lows of our season so far, but... There's serious times approaching. The next five games, let me read them out for you. Away at Carlisle, home to Bury, away to Crew Alexandra, away to Lincoln City and their effing air raid siren. Oh my God. And home to Tranmere. I also hate that air raid siren. It's one of my absolute uh, most detested parts of. It's not even modern football. I don't know what they're doing, but I cannot There's nothing it. modern about an air raid siren. <laughs> no, let's hope that Brexit doesn't bring them back into vogue. No, absolutely. Yeah, that's, you know, get out of that. In a way, I, that's the one reason I sort of hope maybe they get promoted and we don't, or we get promoted and they don't. I don't want to take that air raid siren with them. Maybe we could just go and stick a screwdriver in it. Yeah, they'd find another one. Maybe so. So those are five yeah. serious games. I mean, the next one's big, isn't it? I think after we've that, obviously got a good bit of momentum after absolutely. after Saturday. If we can then, if we can do something in this game, considering I mean, I think Carlisle are the only team currently on better form than us. Yes. In the form table, they're the only ones above us. So if we can get a result there, I think that's going to like you know that's that, that's going to really Carlisle the next like the next four of those games because yeah, if we can come away from those two games. Without losing, then we'll think we can do anything. Well, if we were unbeaten, let's say we're unbeaten in the next five, which is a huge game, a huge shout, and I think probably a bit unlikely. But if we, if we were to pick up, well, nine points from the next five and come out of it only losing one, that would be massive for us. Yeah, oh yeah, that'd be amazing. We'll have to wait and see, but I think... The reason to be positive, of course, apart from the fact that we are in decent form and the, obviously the MK Dons game was you know, a real standout performance from the whole team, but it's the consistent performance of, of Moxley and O'Shea at the back. Yeah. I mean, to start with, I think this question's there, isn't there? That's not, at the start, even at the start of this season, that wouldn't have been anyone's first choice centre back pairing. A really young Loney and a ageing, sorry, Dino, uh, left back. Left back, yeah. <laughs> centre back. No, it it's did. been an absolute revelation. Yeah. In the same way that I mean, I'm I'm constantly surprised by Exeter City centre backs. I don't know who the, who's who's teaching them, who's coaching those guys. Well, because I, I guess it's uh, old Matty Taylor, isn't it? 
Of course. <laughs> and like, if he doesn't know a thing or two about that, then who does, I suppose. But I mean, credit to whoever and credit to those two because they've been, they've looked just like incredible. Yeah, they really have. So I, I'm not worried, actually, about any of these games. I think we'll go and give a good account of ourselves. Absolutely not, yeah. Because with, look at MK, with MK Dons, they've got these, we've not had much of a chance to see MK Dons play, obviously. That's the first time I think I've seen yeah. seen them and, um, you know, they've, no match of the day exists for that level. So unless you're really interested in a look at seeking out that kind of thing, you know these the names of these players because you see they've scored a load of goals. Yeah, Chuck's an EK, you know. And but in real life, he can he can get past those two, could he? You know, and that, no. it fills you with a bit of kind of you think, oh well, if they can keep him quiet, yeah, then it, there's no one that they can't do that to. No, I mean Lincoln at home, we were outclassed. Mm. But that was a really long time ago, just when we were kind of finding our feet. Um, yeah. I'd and like were, to think... They flew out the gate as well, didn't they? Yeah, and of course they've got a lot of consistency and yeah. just add, brought in extra, better players. But we'll see what happens. But those are five huge games. The thing that I'm most positive about is how great St James Park was on Saturday against Milton Keynes. And uh, I was talking to my son's teaching assistant... Uh, shout out Mrs Perryman and she any relation? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so actually I should ask her otherwise you're not welcome here Mrs <laughs> Perryman <laughs> no well she lives on our street and you know I've never seen Steve uh, nearby so I guess she's no relation but she said uh, well it's going to be like that every home game now and I think she's probably right <laughs> I, I've noticed a great uh, a significant increase since the new stand went up in terms of attendance and in terms of atmosphere and you come and watch a game like that, and you think, well, yeah, I want to go to that next game. Well, I hope so, yeah. Five and a half thousand City fans is, is big, isn't it? And I know it's like the Tisdale derby, and uh, yeah. I'm spitting on the floor as I'm saying that, but it's, it, you know, that was really great football, and, and we could see this push forward for promotion kind of really happening. Yeah, and like I said, I think it definitely helps the, t- the team, doesn't it? You know, yeah. Let's get some of those, let's, let's steal back a few of those rugby you know like the people decided they like rugby now just because they've got this fancy ground out of town Dan I don't know what rugby is uh, and I don't want to know but I think you're right I think they're the odd person that's torn Um, yeah if you are one of those people and by some chance you're listening to this podcast then you know it makes sense (laughs) we we're offering um, I know you can drink a pint and watch the game but come on <laughs> We're offering uh, rugby conversion therapy. Yeah, um, it's not in the not in the style of kicking over the post conversion, but uh, come and see us, and we'll tell you all the reasons why rugby's stupid and football's better. Yeah, it's like a sort of brainwashing thing, but it's positive. Well, the truth is, you've been brainwashed into me. Some, no, not you. Um, oh, I see the rugby fans. The yeah. Rugby fans. Um, Something's gone wrong in your brain where you <laughs> think it's a better idea to go and watch that than it is to come to St James Park. Yeah, shout out to the racially dubious Exeter Chiefs and their um, I don't know, a questionable fellow with a tomahawk. I don't know, I don't know what that is. I know that we're, we support the Grecians, but I think that's uh, due homage to the good people of Greece rather than to the oppressed Native Americans. Uh, shout out to you if you're listening to this podcast. Yeah, shout out to Plato. <laughs> shout out to Plato. And Socrates, not the Brazilians. Um, Friends, it's been good to talk to you. Uh, This has been the Big Bank Theory podcast. We'd like to hear from you. This is going to be, well, hopefully a regular occurrence. If you want to get in touch and tell us where you've seen those City players past and present, uh, maybe Steve Flax uh, fixed your garden wall, maybe uh, John Sharp is uh, knocking on your door asking for money for hospice care, we'd love to hear from you. You can get in touch at... Big Bank Pod on Twitter or Big Bank Pod at gmail.com via the email. We're also on Facebook, you can find us on there. My name's John, my friend and colleague Dan is with me. Yep, that's me. Uh, it's been good to talk to you, we'll see you next time. See ya. <laughs>